reporting to you for Fortnite. And um, I, I'll talk about the, the value of, of mistake paper. Okay, so I have in front of me three examples of what I refer to as, as uh, pressing mistakes. At both shops I work at, we have two hydraulic presses. And they, they typically apply um, at, at the most about 80 tons of pressure to an entire stack of wet paper. Um, so quite a bit of pressure. I refer to the first 20, the first 20 tons as the critical tonnage, <laughs> meaning that the sheets are really, really wet and, and susceptible at that point, um, and, and applying a lot of pressure very quickly um, can cause the water in the sheets to rush out very fast and, and create rivulets in, in the fibers. So when pressed too quickly with too much weight, explosions occur, and that's simply from the large amount of water rushing out of the, the sheet of paper too quickly. So I have in front of me a, a gray and white sheet of paper. This is actually two sheets of paper cooched together before they were pressed. On bottom I have a white sheet, on top a gray sheet. Because the gray sheet is actually a shorter fiber, it's more prone to exploding um, simply because it has stronger hydrogen bonds. The water doesn't want to leave those fibers. So what happened is that the gray sheet uh, is slightly more exploded than the white sheet and it shows a lot of these ripples and, and rivulets that occur from the water from the water movement when it's being pressed. Um, also this sheet was a perfectly rectangular sheet of paper before being pressed and is now uh, bulging on, on three sides so it's taken on more of a uh, an, an ovular <laughs> shape rather than rectangular. Um, and finally, I have a, a really thick, hear that, a really thick sheet of cotton paper. Before this was pressed, it was rectangular and about a half inch thick. And um, you know, the, the, the thickness is, is really susceptible to exploding. You have more fibers and more water present. Um, so, so care should be taken to press slowly, which wasn't taken in this instance. Um, so here we actually have not only the, those ripples and rivulets in the sheet itself, but we have um, large tears occurring, large enough for me to fit my finger through. I guess I'll start off with the least and work my way over to the worst. Um, drying samples. So these are these are all mistakes that happen during the drying process. Um, so these examples directly in front of me. These are actually cotton sheets of paper and these are not too wonky. This is a pretty low shrinking sheet of paper, but when left to dry on its own, it just kind of shrinks in, in what we call cockles um, willy-nilly. So, so this was simply left unrestrained to dry. This guy here, this is the, the now famous eight hour abaca um, left to dry unrestrained. So this is a, a high shrinking pulp and left on its own, it's, it's shriveled up, you can hear that. It's shriveled up in a number of different ways. The result is really um, a, a sort of wrinkly skin-like sheet of paper. And finally, I have a number of small circular um, Paper. They look a little bit like mushroom caps, I would, I would say. And when we're working in the studio and um, we're working with artists, a lot of times we mix up um, different colors of, of pulp paint in small containers. And if we're not managing our pulp correctly and we leave some of these containers out to dry over a period of, of really weeks, um, eventually they will take on the form of the bottom of that container and shrink in on top of themselves. And so we're left with these round, um, very sculptural, uh, almost, they're, they're like little mini bowls or plates. And all of these sheets are, I would say all of these, these aren't exactly sheets, but all of these pieces of, of dry paper pulp are, again, high shrinking. You can hear the crispness clues you in that that's some sort of abaca or linen. This is definitely linen. And these are really highly pigmented thick pieces of um, paper pulp dried in, in small cups over a period of weeks.